This video is going to look at inserting a table into a Word document. To insert the table to begin with, it's relatively simple. All we need to do is go to the Insert ribbon and then choose the Tables button. And if I mouse over that, it says Insert or Draw a Table into the document. So we just left click on that button and immediately we have the drop down area. And if we mouse over these squares, it starts creating the table and we get a live preview on the document itself. You should be able to see some numbers at the top of that drop down list. At the moment it will say a 10 by 8 table. 10, or the first number, is always columns. So if I go back one, it's now a 9 by 8 table. And the second number, in this instance 8, is the rows. So if I go up one, it's a 9 by 7 table. To create that table, all we have to do is choose the number of cells that we want, and these little squares are called cells. We just left click and it will apply that table to the document. If you want a slightly larger table, or if you want to make some changes to it, we can click on Insert Table, and that brings up the Insert Table dialog box. And here we can change the number of columns with the up and down arrows by typing in a new number. We can change the number of rows again by clicking the up and down arrows or by typing in a number. The reason you might go for the insert table dialog box is for the auto fit behavior, but for beginners it's best to leave that to fixed column width auto. Just to see this in action, if I make a 4x4 table here by selecting 4 and 4, click OK, then I get my table. And it's exactly the same as mousing over a 4x4 table in that grid. As soon as the table is created, we have the cursor or insertion point flashing in the top left cell, and that gives us two new tabs and two new ribbons underneath Table Tools. We have the Design and Layout tabs, and we'll be looking at those in a moment. Do please be aware with Word 2007, if you exit the table, so if I click outside of the table, those two tabs disappear. They're only active when we're inside the table, when the cursor is flashing inside the cell. So have a look at these groups now. Table style options and table styles are to do with how the table looks. Um, table style options, we have header row, first column, total row, last column, banded rows, and banded columns. And if you mouse over those things, then it gives you a brief description of their use. And these are linked to the table styles. And this is to do with making the table look pretty and colourful. But it does serve a purpose. At the moment, we've got header row. If I choose this one, we've got header row, so you can see the headings quite easily and then we've got banded rows so that you can differentiate between different pieces of information so if you had a relatively long row you should be able to follow it along because it's a different color from the one above and below to turn that off if we just go to table grid two more useful buttons in here are the shading and borders button Shading is to do with shading your cells. With a table, we don't need to have the cell selected. We only have to have the cursor flashing inside that cell. And then this is a dual function button. If I click on the paint bucket, then whatever color is on the line beneath will be inserted. If I choose another cell, if you click on the drop down arrow, it allows you to choose whichever color you desire. We've got some nice pastels running along the top, and then variants on those colours in these lists. And then we have standard colours as well. So they're blocks of colour. And again, be aware, as you mouse over a different colour, as long as the cell that you have highlighted or selected is in view, you get a live preview of that colour. If none of these colours take your fancy, we have more colours. And that opens a colour swatch where you can choose whichever colour you want. 
and then you can increase or decrease the darkness with these ones. You can also go to custom colors where you can choose if you know a specific number of red, green and blue that you want making up the color, you can choose it there. In previous versions of Word, if you shaded a cell in a very dark color, if I go with black, and then typed inside that and tried to print it out in a black and white printer, you might not have been able to read the text. But if I start typing here, you can see that the text is coming out in white. So the text should always be visible, no matter what color you've chosen. It is always a good idea, though, to go with a relatively light or um, yes, light color, just to make sure that the text is always visible. So if I undo those changes, we'll have a look at the second button. And again, borders is a dual function button. We have the main button and then a drop down button. Borders are these lines breaking up the table. So it's the outside, inside, and row and column lines that you can see. We can turn off borders, we can apply borders, it can be quite interesting, but it can also be a little bit um, tricky. By default, we'll have in an individual cell the bottom, top, left and right border, and then outside borders. So we'll have the borders visible for an individual cell. If I select the whole table, and one way to do that is to mouse towards the, if it works, mouse towards the top left hand side, as soon as you see that four way directional arrow, if you just left click, it selects everything. And then if we look at the borders again, we'll see we've also got all borders, inside borders, inside horizontal and inside vertical borders. So they're telling us which borders we can see. If I click no border, then you can immediately not see any borders, but we have got these little dashed lines indicating where the individual cells are. And on the layout, we can change this by clicking on view grid lines, which can get very tricky. So with view grid lines on, you can see the individual cells. And you have to remember that even if we can't see the border, they are still individual cells. A good way to be able to see this is to go to the home tab and click on the show hide button. And then you can see these little stars indicate each cell. If you find that borders have disappeared, to turn borders on, we can have the cursor flashing inside an individual cell. Click on the drop down arrow, and then if I say all borders, I see I get all of the borders around that cell. I could click in a second cell and say top, or bottom rather, top, and then left and right. So you can be very selective about which borders you see. If I just go to layout and turn off the view grid lines, it looks quite interesting. Again, if I just select the whole thing, design and all borders, do be aware, as I say, it's a dual function button. So the drop down gives us individual options, and the button is the um, last option that you've selected. You see it turns into all borders once I turn all borders on. So that's the table stars group. The draw borders allows us with the draw table button to draw our own table. But again, that's not something that we're going to be looking at in any great detail. It also allows you to change the type of border and the thickness of the border we can also change the border color or the pen color. Yes. The eraser allows us to erase cell lines. So if I mouse over this one here and just left click, 
and delete that border. If I want to delete multiple borders, I can press and hold the left mouse button and just drag the mouse over the top and you can see that they're changing colour. If I release the left mouse button, then it's deleted all of those borders. Do be aware it has not only deleted the borders, if I go to layout and turn view grid lines on again, it has deleted the individual cells as well. So it's now just one huge cell and that's one way in which we can merge cells together. So if I go to the eraser I can merge these three cells by just erasing the dividing lines. So that's the design ribbon for tables. If we have a look now at the layout ribbon, we've already seen the view grid lines button that allows us to turn off and on that line of um, grid lines. With select, we can select an individual cell. So wherever the cursor is flashing, it will select that cell. I'll go for this one as well. We can select individual columns and again it's the column in which the cursor is flashing. You can select individual rows, again wherever the cursor is flashing, or you can select the whole table. Properties is quite interesting. It allows us to, table will be shown by default. If your table does not fill the page, so go from the left hand to the right hand margin, you can change the alignment of your table, you can change the text wrapping of your table, you can change the width. Again with row you can change the height of a row, with columns you can change the width, and with cells you can change the preferred width and the vertical alignment. This is a slightly advanced option so we're not looking at it in any great detail but do be aware of the options there. A second way to select tables, I think we've already seen, is to mouse over the top left hand icon of a four way directional arrow. When we've got the four way directional arrow mouse cursor, left click and it selects the whole table. And then with the delete button, we can delete individual cells, columns, rows, or the whole table. And again, with cells, columns, and rows, it's wherever the insertion point or cursor is flashing. So I've deleted my table. <coughs> again, with the rows and columns group, we can insert above, insert below, and that's rows. So wherever the cursor is flashing, you can insert a line directly above or below the selected row. We can also insert left and insert right. So if I click in here, insert left, we get a new column. If I insert right, again we get a new column. With the merge group, merge is merge cells is similar to erasing cells. I have a number of different rows selected here. So if I click on merge cells, they all become one large cell. If we only have one cell selected or the insertion point flashing in one cell, then merge cells is grayed out because we can't merge an individual cell. Split cells allows us to split the cell into individual rows and columns. So if I want to get this one back, it's one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So I can say split cells. I'm going to leave it as one column and six rows. Click OK. And then it's got all those rows back. We can also split the table. So if I split the table, it now becomes two separate tables. With cell size, we can choose the height of rows and the width of cells. We have the auto fit options, but again, these are best left untouched at beginner level. So if we knew a specific height or width that we wanted for the tables, then we could change them there. A second way to change them is to mouse over the dividing line of a column and get the double ended left and right arrow press and hold the left mouse button and then we can stretch 
the columns as we want, or for a row, position the mouse cursor over the dividing line and get the up and down arrow. Again, press and hold the left mouse button, and then we'll release when it's wide or short enough. So that's cell distribution, really. With um, the distribute rows or columns, this is distributing them e evenly. So if I had one row that was ridiculously tall, one row that was slightly tall, and then one short row, if I make sure the whole table is selected, then distribute rows evenly will even up that uh, distribution of rows. And again, if we have a look at some columns that are unevenly distributed, and distribute columns distributes them evenly. That's cell size. We haven't looked at inserting information into these cells just yet, or navigating in, in between the cells, so we'll do that now. All we have to do is have the cursor flashing inside a cell and start typing. So if I type in the name for this one, to move into the next cell in a row, we can either left click when the mouse cursor is over that cell, just type Monday, or we can press the left or right or up and down cursor on the keyboard. If I want to move right by one cell, all I have to do is click on the right button and it takes me to the next cell. I can also press the tab button. The tab button will move me one row to the right each time I press it, and at the end of a table, or the end of a, in the last column, it will take me down one row. If I press and hold Shift and then press Tab, it moves left. Completing our top column. If I type in gonna leave that on that. So, yes. So inserting text into a cell is relatively simple. All we have to do is make sure that cell is selected and then start typing. To edit that information, if I wanted to embolden the days of the week, all I'd have to do is select that information. And to select it, all we've done is position the mouse cursor inside the cell, press on the left mouse button and drag across. And then I can go to the home ribbon and say bold. If I wanted to italicize every use of the word no, again I would just have to highlight the text and italicize it. So we can format text in exactly the same way as a normal Word document. All you have to do is make sure the text is highlighted and then apply that formatting change that you want. With cells, you can see that the text in these cells is all the way up at the top of the cell and to the left-hand side. And this is the alignment of the cells. This is very similar to the alignment of text on a page. Remember in previous videos we've seen that we've got the left, center, right and justify alignment options. And we can use these in the same way. So I've got the cursor flashing next to the word yes. If I click on center, then it centers that text. If I click on right, it right aligns the text. If I click on justify, it will again left align the text. And we can apply this to all of the 
cells. But with these cells, you can see that they're quite wide, and you might want the cells, or you might want the information at different vertical areas in the cell. And we saw that earlier with the properties button. We also have the alignment group in the layout ribbon. So again, we've got the top left option, which is align top left, and then we've got align top center and align top right. And then we have align center left, align center, and align center right, align bottom left, bottom right, bottom center rather, and then bottom right. So if you wanted your text dead center, all we'd have to do is click on that option and the text is dead center in the cells. Do be aware, sometimes the alignment might not look correct and that's because of uh, line spacing. <clears throat> line spacing. If we had the text set to double line spacing, you see it's jumped up a little bit, so it's not quite dead center, and that's because the text is double line spaced. You see how wide my selection areas are now. If I set that back to single line spacing, and the text does go into the middle of the cell now. Something again that we don't really need to know in beginners but is interesting is text direction. We can change the text direction within the selected cells by merely clicking on that button and then we can change the way in which or the direction in which the cells sh um, are displayed. We can also apply cell margins. So if you wanted to make sure that you had a margin around the cell, so an area where you couldn't print or couldn't have text inserted, then we'd have a little margin. So we've now got a square that you can't see around the text where we can't actually do anything. And that's the cell margins. And again, it's not something that we need to worry about in beginners. The last group that we have here is data. We're not really going to look at this at all. But um, if you wanted to, it's something that you could play around with just to investigate. Things like sort should be relatively obvious. It will sort in a alphabetical area and it allows you to sort in different bits of information. So if you wanted to sort by column two, sort the text using paragraphs in ascending order and then it's changed the information and see if I undo that you can see that the information has switched because I've sorted it by the word yes so N comes before Y in the alphabet so that's why it's changed and that's why we're not looking at the data group at this level. So that is inserting and editing tables within Word. And again, do remember, as soon as you mouse out of a table, those tabs disappear. They're only active when we're inside a table.